All right, so we have basically gotten the top half disconnected. Pulled the battery box out, even though the instruction didn't say to do that. Battery case, uh, the bolts in the bottom here, they're actually slotted. I didn't know that, now I do. So you don't have to take them all the way out. Ground strap. Um, yeah, got the connectors all disconnected and sealed up so no bugs and crap could get in there. I drained the oil last night just to get it out of there because we needed to. Got all of the under panels off. There's the front. It's all beat up from the whatever the hell life this thing led before I got it. Oh, yeah, there's the old pan. Let's see what we got here. So, basically, what's next, after I put the plug back in up here, is I have to pop the wheels off, separate the steering knuckle and the lower ball joints, right there, and back there, and then take this mount off, and it says I need to disconnect the steering, but I have to see if the steering is attached to this cross member. Because this whole cross member has to come down before it then comes out. After the cross member comes down, you know, we've got just four big honking bolts, um, then the transmission can come out after you separate the half shafts also over there and uh, back there somewhere then we can uh, potentially drop the transmission. We're not quite doing this in the order that they say in the book, because I don't have the right hanger. That is a doohickey that uh, forces you to remove this cover, all of this, the whole windshield cowl, everything else sits up top here and hangs the engine off of a thing after you take all of these solenoids off and put a bracket there and it hangs it. Well, we're not going to do that, because I don't have that, and that seems kind of ridiculous. We'll find out if it's ridiculous once I get to it. But, starter's out. It looked good. Six little tiny bolts through the flywheel. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to put those back. I'm tempted to mark it with a paint marker just for grins, because they're kind of weird, and they're little tiny things. I mean, 10 millimeter heads. I don't know that they're M... You know, little tiny bolts. Is the six flywheel bolts or starter gear bolts? I don't know. At least this thing does have a starter um, versus like the Priuses, the Prii that don't. So if the big battery goes dead, you can still start the engine. With the 12 volt battery, which is nice. Uh, that was really helpful when I was doing the original troubleshooting on the uh, system in the back because the big battery was not functional. Now the big battery is still functional. It charges. Everything's good, we just have a bearing issue in this transmission. So, we're going to carry on and bust off the wheels. I got a ball joint separator. First time I've ever had one of those, so I don't need to use a hammer or a pickle fork. Try not to damage this stuff because it's in good shape. And then we're going to see what we do. I'm not going to concentrate too much on the disassembly. I may show dropping the transmission if it gets to that point. Um, but what I really, I, what I will show is when I get to the point of taking the transmission apart, what's inside of this thing. Because I think this is going to be pretty neat. Supposedly there's a filter on this end. And then once it splits the differentials back here, which is what I believe that sensor for the speed sensor reads, and I believe that's where my broken bearing is. It's on the differential itself, which should be one of the first things to come out uh, once that uh, this side cover is off. So, uh, here's hoping. It's going pretty good so far. I haven't broken anything kept except a couple of bolts that uh, screw down the holder for the <laughs> engine computer because uh, I had the impact gun in forward rather than reverse. So that didn't work, but we were able to since it just snapped them off, I was able to screw the uh, broken pieces out, and we'll just get some new 10 millimeters for that. Or I'll just use the uh, flywheel bolts I don't need. We'll find out. you got to have extra parts when you're done. So, onward we go. 
All right, cross members out. Everything is off. Got a big hole underneath. Not quite doing it in the same direction, but at this point we have everything disconnected. Except for the upper motor mount or the trans mount here. And we'll get underneath. Make the light work. Show you what we got. The half shafts actually popped out of the transmission pretty darn nicely. We got those hung. Uh, according to the directions, I'm supposed to remove the entire steering rack, but I didn't because it looked like it would clear and I didn't want to figure out how to get up in there and undo the steering shaft because that's attached to the subframe. But I was able to get to the four bolts that hold it in and it's suspended with a big zip tie around the exhaust. And it uh, seems pretty good. So we have a whole bunch of clearance around this now so now I need to get a board put a normal jack a floor jack under the engine bust off the last four bolts that are holding this thing and it's supposed to come out I don't know how because we don't have a lot of room up there but uh, we're supposed to be able to pull the transmission now and I have another drain that I didn't even know about so that's interesting of course, it's right next to this one. So, that's kind of cool. We'll play with that later. But, uh, yeah. We're going to try to take this bad boy out. Whew! Well, everything went absolutely perfectly until the absolute last bolt up in the top corner here from the back. You can't see it. And it's a real tight squeeze to get to it. And it was... Man, it was tight. Because these bolts are... Good night. <laughs> Not insignificant. So they take a, a lot of stretch and a lot of torque to break them loose, but they all come out nice. And uh, supposedly, quote oh, Joey Tribbiani, this, I've pulled it away. And, uh, it's supposed to come down now. Everything seems to be good, so let's tap the down. And if I can find it, there's the pedal. Oop, there it goes. Okay. Hold it forward a little bit. Okay. Feels like it's coming down. Dummy, you're on the damn stops. Piece of crap. Okay, let's try this again. I'll be damned. That is how it comes out. Who would have thought? And, uh, Now we're as far down as the jack will go. So, but that's a... I cannot believe that that transmission is hooked to the engine with six, like, M8 by one and a quarter bolts. That is crazy. I can't believe that. That little hole I put the paint on, there's six of those little bolts. That is the only thing hooking the drivetrain to the trans. Absolutely nuts. That is insanity. Absolute insanity. And now I gotta figure out how to get this down a bit lower and get it out of here. Oh, but I think I'm done for the day because this was not too bad. This is probably only a couple, three hours of work maybe to get this down to this point. Really not terrible. And uh, yeah, you don't need to drop the steering. You don't need to take all of this garbage apart. You don't need to remove the brake cylinder. This back bolt on the engine mount's a little tough. But uh, yeah, you can save yourself a little time. 
as long as you use a couple of jacks and not their silly brackets but I guess that's how they get the hours up but uh, wow look at that it is actually held in I mean the flex plate on this thing is stamped tin that's nuts the flex plate is stamped tin <laughs> Well, I guess if you've only got <laughs> like 70, 60 horsepower, you don't need a lot. But holy crap, that is not what I expected to see. Oh, wow. That is wild. That is absolutely wild. So, all right, she's out. And uh, so I guess tomorrow we'll figure out how to get it out. Oh, no, that's not all the way down. What the hell? Why are you not? Are you caught on something? Why are you not going down? Anyway, we'll figure out how to get this thing out of here. And then we'll flip it up on a table. Start tearing it down. Well, trans is out. Everything went good. So, now we're going to start going through some of the disassembly. My problem child is right in here. So this whole cover is going to have to come off. And uh, before we do that, though, according to the disassembly instructions, if I flip it over on this bottom case where the drains are, if you take that off, there's supposedly a filter in there that you can clean, kind of like an automatic transmission. And I don't see that in any of the maintenance recommendations, so we got 200 and change thousand miles on this, 235-ish, and uh, I don't think the oil was ever changed until I did it 8,000 miles ago, or 9,000 miles ago. So... We're going to flip that on its side, try not to ruin it, and then see if we can pop that cover off and find the filter. I did order an entire gasket kit for this thing because there's some seals on the input shaft and all these do have gaskets. And uh, I just don't want to glop it all back together with silicone. So it was like 250 bucks for all the gaskets, but yeah, what you going to do? The price of doing business. So hopefully that comes in. I tried to order the bearings direct from Honda that I believe I need for this differential carrier. And they are discontinued, so they canceled my order. So I found one on Amazon that was a Honda part and ordered that because I believe I only need one. And if that's correct and I only need the one, we're all gonna, only going to change the one because ball bearings, you don't change those preemptively. They, uh, that's not how they work. So we're going to flip this over, try to get a video view of it, and see what we can do. All right, so yeah, this is the lower pan assembly, the filters under there and the valve bodies under there so these are all tens little tiny well they're pretty substantial let's see if they're all the same size <laughs> they're not oh that's wonderful Let's get the paint pen and start marking the short ones. unit is shaped such that the socket doesn't want to go on. So. That's 
super long ones in the bottom. So those are all off. Oh, oh, missed one. Oh, missed another one. I think that's all of them. Let's get a little tappy tap and see if, uh, See if that's going to want to play ball. Sure enough, there's a filter. I'll be darned. All right, so it just says to pull that off, clean it, and replace and uh, put it back. So that's what we're gonna do. I think we'll be able to figure those out. Yeah, that's beautiful. Fabulous. That is, uh, that's pretty gross. So we're going to go hit this with some, mechanically it looks pretty good. There doesn't seem to be any chunks in it. No chunks came out of the bottom when I pulled the uh, magnet last time. So we're going to go blow this out with some uh, very clean, little tiny O-ring right there. Hopefully the seal kit comes with a new O-ring. We'll save that one just in case because it just goes right in there and bumps up against that stop. But yeah, we're going to go clean this filter because I think this is where a lot of our junk is coming from. Look what I just found. That is a piece of bearing cage as I expected. That was sitting right there. So, I don't think I want to pull the valve body, but uh, yeah, there is definitely some metal. There are a couple of magnets in here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Another hunk of cage stuck to the magnet. So those magnets did their job. We're going to pull those out and clean those really good too. Yep, we have lost the cage on that bearing. I'm amazed it made it all the way down there. But I guess it's directly above here, so that's about where it's going to fall. It's going to come down through here. There may be some metal. I think I can see some up in there. Eh, maybe not. Uh, it looks pretty clean. So, yep. That is uh, definitely problematic, but we'll get there. I'm going to go clean that filter. So that's all the uh, cage chunks. You can see the ball shape in them. It doesn't appear that they got caught in anything on the way down, but that was everything that was in the pan. So that's not what you want. Filter's clean, pan's clean, magnets are clean. Given what we just found in here, I am not going to put that back on because now I got to flip this thing upside down and take the top off of it. 
which should be entertaining. This thing is fairly heavy. It's probably a good 150 pounds at least, if not a little more. So we're going to roll this over and start looking at how the top cover comes off. Or the uh, differential side cover, let's say. Alright, so the next set of instructions says just pull every one of these four million screws out and take that off. I think the first thing I'm going to do though is take the motor mount off of it. Because that looks like it's going to be in the way a little bit. So, be right back. Alright, so that obstruction is gone. It's big 17 inch, 17 inch, 17 millimeters. And we'll start popping all these out. Are these 12s? Oh, these are 12s. Interesting. Okay, I think I'm going to leave all of those in there because they don't look the same size. Let's see if we can make sure I haven't missed any. It looks okay. locating pins in here somewhere and there I can feel them she's starting to loosen up I think may need a judicious application of pry bar She's kind of sticky, so we're going to work on this for a minute. I don't want to kill the camera battery just on this boring crap, so we're going to pop this off. If I find anything that I've screwed up, I'll let you know. Let's try that. Hey! Loosen all the bolts, stuff comes apart. Alright, let's see if she'll lift off. Uh, 
There it is. Whoo! Look, uh. Oh, yeah, it's upside down. <laughs> Alright. Where's my sensor? Oh. The sensor is not reading the differential. Okay. So here's the differential. Look at that, bearing chunks on it. Not what you want. The sensor is actually reading right here. This is this is the sensor. But the sensor is reading this gear. So it could be the back bearing on whatever intermediate shaft that is, which that's that's not how that's supposed to sound. <laughs> okay, all right. Look at the little tiny chain. Oh man, that's the pump. <laughs> Holy smoke. Little guy. Gears look okay. All right. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, we don't want to lose this. And there's the other one. I think there may be three. We've got two of our alignment dolls and yeah, the other one may st hopefully still be stuck in the uh, cover we'll check that in a minute but uh, this bearing does not feel loose but it's garbage so that's the bearing I bought that's not going to be the right one I don't know that it's going to be failed I think it could be save that spacer could be this guy Especially because I've still got, you can see the metal chunks on this thing coming down from the top. So, set this down and uh, see what we want to do next. Alright, so I checked the bearing on the in the case that supports this and it looks good. Doesn't sound terrible. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a shielded bearing like this. Uh, so, but it doesn't sound crunchy. That one's bad, so we're going to have to change that. Supposedly, this just pulls straight up. Yep. It does. Oh, yeah, listen. That one's perfect. This one's garbage. It's not shop garbage, but it's garbage. Conveniently, I did buy one of those, so that's good. We'll be able to change that. Seal looks good. Now we've got to see how this comes out because I believe the bearing failure is going to be under here. This movement is what's eating the sensor, is what I believe. So we still have not found our cage yet. So now we're going to see if this just pulls up and out or what in order to clear this. I really don't want to bust this chain loose. I don't feel I have to. Everything on that end has been good. <laughs> That's your input shaft, as crazy as that is. A little tiny guy. I don't know that it's five-eighths of an inch wide. It's crazy. That's what a flywheel actually attaches to. Unbelievable. Look at this stuff. It's like a freaking Swiss, Swiss watch. But, uh, yeah, so everything else looks pretty good. So, we're going to figure out how to get this guy out, because I'm betting that is our problem. Supposedly, the thrust ring in this... Well, 
old drive gear. That's supposed to come off. Supposedly, this is supposed to come out. I have a bad feeling, though, that that may have gummed itself to that other bearing. We may need to get this off, which is going to require a puller. Yeah, this is, uh, the shaft is supposed to pull out of that other gear. certainly does not want to. All right, so that's uh, problematic. I don't know if that's keyed. Does not appear to be. Move the thrust shim and the Final gear drive shaft, and then remove secondary drive gear. That one's going to be entertaining, so we're going to have to think about this for a little bit. All right, so that just needed a bare little bump with a puller to get her off. I don't want to take the rest of that out. I really don't. But, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, because it's trapped under the parking gear. So we'll set this guy off to the side, over here. Alright, since my puller wasn't quite right, I had to do it in two steps. If you can go down and grab onto the start gear, you can pull the whole thing off as a unit, which we did. That bearing looks good, that's a big roller bearing. Oh yeah, I think that's my bad one. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to pull it out yet, because that shaft is jammed in the bearing. Um, so that's definitely what we have. We have a failed bearing on that shaft. That is what was causing all the noise. You can hear the ball slapping around. And that was what was causing this to move enough to eat the sensor and ruin the sensor. So hopefully this is as far down as we have to pull this. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get this guy out. We're going to find out eventually, because we are going to get it out. And it looks like there's a bunch of O-rings in here. I'm kind of glad that I got the rear seal kit, because hopefully they come with new O-rings. They look kind of flat. Yeah, it looks like there's three O-rings on that bad boy. So. We're going to have to wait until that seal kit comes in to put this all back together. You can see the gasket tore a little bit here. Just a very thin paper gasket, but it's what you need to get your tolerances right. But yeah, so this shaft is supposed to pull out of this bearing. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> that ain't happening. So, I'm going to have to do some more thinking figure out what we're going to do. But yeah, we've definitely found our culprit. This isn't quite the one I thought. I thought it was one of the big ones, but I didn't realize there was a double gear in here. All the teeth look good. Everything else spins smooth as silk. But yeah, I would say that is, uh, that is my problem. So we're going to try to get that out of there. Or come up with a way to get that out of there. Alright, with the help of, a, with an assist from a bricking bar, Got some dual pry bar action going on. 
We think, I think I have that loose. Oh yeah, there it is. She's out. That may be my problem. <laughs> perfect. Shaft looks perfect and serviceable. A little bit of scuffing on the bottom edge. Why this wouldn't come out of this gear, I don't know, because it's supposed to. I think the gear's loose on it right now, or it was. Yeah, it is. Beautiful. I'm sure this is fascinating, but there she goes. That's what it was supposed to do. Wonderful. So we will set this, which again, looks wonderful. Set you over here in the pile. And there it is. Your weirdly classic cage failure. And unfortunately there's going to be some stuff on that other side, I think. And I may have to go see if I can go fishing for. I'm going to have to see. I don't want to take that other piece of side apart, but I don't think I have all the cage. Now, getting that bearing out is going to be a trip, because it does come out from this side. Uh, so that's going to be entertaining. I mean, worst case, I can cut it. Um, we can do that. But, yep, there it is. That is your cage failure. That's the noise I've been hearing. And when the balls don't line up, you end up with a clearance issue. So... Wonderful. We're going to probably pack this up for tonight because it's getting a little late. We have found our issue. And then we're going to have to get that out of there somehow, which ought to be a trip. And then see if we're going to have to open up the backside of this transmission to fish out all the other junk that I think is probably gone. Because I don't know how many balls were supposed to be there. we got one, two, three, four, six, seven. That doesn't quite seem like enough. Uh, maybe it is, but the cage has certainly disintegrated down this side into this area. How it got there, I don't know. It got there. It had to have come from that other side. So this cage is all on this other side of the transmission. So we're going to have to get that all apart, I think. Which sucks, but there is another cover on the back side. Um, we'll just have to figure out how to do it. So... There we go. That's our part. So now I got two bearings that are bad, one on the differential carrier and one on the prime the final drive gear. Uh, all the other ones seem okay. And we're going to keep going and get this thing torn apart down to nothing. Get this bearing chunks out of there so they don't do any more damage than they already have and see what we can do. But I think this is going to be a good transmission after I get it back together. So we will see you in the next one.